It is no secret that Linux Mint is my favorite Linux distribution. From the first time I saw it, I went from, yep, Linux will work, to, wow, Linux may be perfect. What caused such a revelation? Why is Linux Mint the perfect distro for me? Well, these are my reasons. They may not be your reasons, that's perfectly okay. You will have your own reasons, but hopefully a journey through my discovery of Linux Mint will help you on your discovery for the perfect Linux build. Also, it is worth mentioning that once you find the perfect build, it is best to stay on that distro and to keep learning about that one. Only switch again if you find a major need that bears addressing. Let's start with a few basics. The first is, it really doesn't matter what distro you run, although it's probably best if you stick with one of the mainstream distributions like Debian, Mint, Ubuntu, Arch, Manjaro, OpenSUSE, Fedora. My apologies if I left out your favorite. But the next, pick a distribution that is matched to your level of skill with a computer. Some distros will require more troubleshooting. The reward is a perfectly tailored system that is exactly what you want. Others may need a little bit of hand-holding, and a few minor compromises may occur. But even in 2019 Linux, that's pretty rare. Another basic is to understand the parent of your distribution. This helps if you're trying to troubleshoot any issues that arrive. Debian tricks and fixes should generally work on anything based on Debian, like Ubuntu or Mint or MX, Linux Lite, Peppermint, <laughs> most distros. <laughs> but they may not work on Arch or Fedora, OpenSUSE. It depends on what the fix is, what you're trying to do. So you need to understand that. There's another reason to stay closer to the parent if you can. Now, with these basics out of the way, I want to ask myself what is in the perfect Linux build, and I considered three parts. Number one is the applications. Nearly all Linux distros will run nearly all the same applications. Very, very few exceptions to that. Versions and how often these cycles version is the consideration when you're looking at your applications. Arch and some branches of OpenSUSE are called rolling releases, which means they always get the recent software versions. Anytime new features come out, new user interface, functionality will be rolled right along with every single update in your distribution. Other distros are called long-term stable, LTS, as you might see. These will hold back some package versions, but it's very important, they still get security updates. The software basically stays the same, but is always safe. In the middle, there are a few distros like Fedora that have new versions about every year, but the new versions roll all the new versions of software with it. So it's kind of like a rolling, but not really. The difference is on a rolling distribution, when you push the updates, it automatically gets everything. On something like a Fedora, every time you get the, the new release, which is about every, every nine months to a year, I forget what Fedora's release schedule is, you get a whole new system with all the latest software. So Fedora, a little bit different in the middle. This is not incremental. That's the important part, which is the difference between a rolling distro and these other ones. Now, in my personal case, I like to see applications stay the same. I want any changes to my software to be tested ahead of time, practiced on, confirmed, so I do not like rolling distros on production computers. I don't want those surprises. A distribution that does not change my software automatically is my personal preference. While Mint is sometimes criticized for having older packages, it is exactly that which caused an attraction for me. Debian and Ubuntu are also good candidates in this department. They will all get security updates as soon as they are released, so it's not like you're running any security concern with your operating system. It's just that the feature changes, the user interface, the workflow, there will not be any changes in the updates that you get on these, as long as you're not changing your versions. You know, Mint 19 to versus 
or Mint 18.3 to 19.0, or Debian 8 to Debian 9 to Debian 10, that's where you're going to see your version changes. So in contrast to this, other mainstream distros that I mentioned, they are great, and I actually run them on other computers for testing and to stay up to date with the changes. But they update software too quickly, and that sometimes changes my workflow. And we all know Murphy, he comes when you least expect it. Anytime we're under a deadline, you can expect that Arch update to change a package which completely interferes with your user uh, user workflow. Uh, I don't want that. <laughs> Rolling packages, they're just not my forte. All these taken together, any Debian family of distros are going to be a good choice for me. Now the second is the tools. Uh, this is an interesting one. System tools, this is, uh, they're either very helpful or wasteful bloat kind of depends. Depends on the user preference, which is what makes subjective feelings feel so bloated or streamlined is difficult to manage, all right? These subjective terms, what one one person's streamlined is another person's completely lacking functionality. <laughs> one guy's bloated is another guy's, uh, I don't know. A missing tool can be problematic when you realize you need to format a drive, but there's no utility installed on the system to handle the task. Sure, installing software on Linux is very easy, but there is a complete feel to the operating system when I look at the accessories and see that my beloved <laughs> and odd character map is installed. Am I the only one that actually uses the character map on a regular basis? <laughs> Let me know. Oh boy. Uh, most distros come with archive managers, document viewers, simple text editors, of course. But I found surprising few are so equipped with system tools in Linux Mint. And I like to see that. They are tools I don't use every day, but when I do need them, Mint has them. They even have some extra tools that I find very useful. USB formatter and stick writer, streamlined applications for photos and video, not to mention backup and system restore applications in the event those tools are needed in a pinch and you don't have time to go research one to install. In short, Mint is fully loaded, which is what I personally like in an operating system. Again, that's my reason, may not be yours. Finally, the UI, user interface. I believe many Linux users, at least among the home users, had their first experience with Linux on one of the Ubuntu builds during the Unity rise. Yes, Unity was the desktop a lot of us first saw with the iconic look. I did not care for the layout as much at first, though it did grow on me. I did, though, try several real projects on the system and found the UI, while having some useful function, it still was not ideal for the way I tried to work. I loved Linux at that point in time, but I really wanted a more traditional feel. I went hunting, and when I first booted Linux Mint into a live environment on my laptop, there was no turning back. The user interface is what sold me. Cinnamon is that perfect balance of traditional Windows interface with the modern UI elements. If I'm so inclined, and I'm actually not, I could connect Linux Mint with a cloud account through Nextcloud or those other guys. The menu is the same location with the same function as I was used to in Windows. I had a full taskbar where I could easily see each application open and quickly pull that application up as needed. I can minimize all Windows easily and work efficiently off my desktop, which is my regular practice. Am I stuck in my ways? Well, I must confess maybe I was at first. I liked the Windows layout and I was used to it. But I've since forced myself to learn other desktops like GNOME, Deepin, and Budgie. But I keep coming back to the traditional workflow found in that older interface. What may have started as being stuck in my ways has given out to experimenting with a variety of setups and workflows to finally confirm the traditional layout in the Cinnamon desktop is my most ideal production working environment, whether I'm writing a book or building a website. The Linux Mint team pioneered the Cinnamon desktop, and through trial and error, I keep landing on that desktop as my most optimal setup for real productivity. Sure, I could use a variety of different distros that all use the Cinnamon desktop, but the philosophy of application management 
the robust list of system tools and the user interfaces combined to give me the perfect distribution in Linux Mint. If you are a Windows user looking to experiment with Linux, I would suggest you start with Linux Mint Cinnamon. What is your favorite distro? Let me know what it is and why it is. As always, I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.